Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Richard Widmark, Kathy Lewis, and Elliot Lewis in tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, Autolite proudly presents part one of the first radio dramatization of William Shakespeare's tragic history of love and death, Othello. Our stars, Richard Widmark, Kathy Lewis, and Elliot Lewis. Marlo, what's this great electing system of yours? Oh, you mean the Autolite electrical system that's designed to work as a perfect team. The generator, starting motor, distributor, and coil, spark plugs, battery, and all the other units are related by Autolite engineering design and manufacturing skill to give you the smoothest performance money can buy. Can it get me re-elected, Harlow? Senator, with an Autolite electrical system, you just can't lose. It starts the instant you turn the starting switch and works every second your engine runs. It works, too, every time you blow the horn, turn on lights, radio, heater, or electric windshield wiper. Sounds mighty important. It sure is, and that's why it pays to treat the electrical system of your car to a periodic checkup at your car dealer or your nearest authorized Autolite service station. To locate him, look in the classified section of the phone book under Automobile Electrical Service, or call Western Union by number and ask for Operator 25. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite presents transcribed part one of William Shakespeare's Othello. Starring Richard Widmark as Iago, and Kathy Lewis as Desdemona, and Elliot Lewis as the Moor, hoping once again to keep you in suspense. Act One, Scene One. Venice, a street. Enter Rodrigo and Iago. You told me you hated the Moor. Despise me if I do not. I know my price, Rodrigo. I am worth no worse a place. But, says he, I have already chosen my officer. And what was he? Forsooth one Michael Cassio of Florentine. He in good time must his lieutenant be. And I, God bless the mark. His worship's ensign. I would not follow him then, good Iago. Oh, sir, content you. I follow him to serve my turn upon him. We cannot all be masters, nor all masters cannot be truly followed. In following him, I follow but myself. Call up her father. Rouse him. Make after him. Poison his delight. What ho, Vibrancio! Signor Vibrancio, ho! Look to your house, your daughter, and your bags. Thieves! Thieves! What is the reason of this terrible summons? What is the matter there? Signor, is all your family within? Are all doors locked? What have you lost your wit? Most reverend, Signor. Do you know my voice? Not I. What are you? My name is Rodrigo. Oh, worse welcome. I have charged you not to haunt about my doors. In honest plainness, you've heard me say my daughter is not for you. Sir, I beseech you that your fair daughter, Desdemona... To the gross clasps of a lascivious moor has fled. Straight satisfy yourself. If she be in her chamber or your house, let loose on me the justice of the state for this delusion. Strike on the tinder hole. Give me a taper. Call up all my people. Like I say, like. Farewell, Rodrigo, for I must leave you. It seems not meet nor wholesome to my place to be produced against the moor. Lead to the arsenal, the raised search, and there will I be with him. So farewell. Scene two, outside the arsenal, a few moments later. Enter Othello, Iago, in attendance with torches. Tis better as it is. But I pray, see, are you fast married? For be sure of this, that Signor Babancio is much beloved and hath in his effect a voice potential as double as the Duke's. He will divorce you. Let him do his spite. My loyal services shall outtongue his complaints. For no Iago, but that I love the gentle Desdemona. But look. What lights come yonder? These are the raised father and his friends. You were best go in. No, not I. I must be found. Is it they? By Janus, I think no. The servants of the Duke and my Lieutenant Cassio. 
the goodness of the night upon you, friends. What is the news, Cassio? The Duke does greet you, General, and he requires your haste, post-haste appearance even on the instant. What's the matter, thank you? Something from Cyprus, as I may divine. You've been hotly called for. It is well I'm found by you. Come, Captain, will you go? Have with you. Here comes another troop to seek for you. It is Brabantio, General. Be advised, he comes to bad intent. Hola, stand there. Senor, it is the Moor. Then down with him. Thief! Keep up your bright sword for the jewel, Rustum. Foul thief. Where hast thou stowed my daughter I'll have disputed on? Where will you that I go to answer this your charge? To prison. What if I do obey? How may the Duke be therewith satisfied whose messengers are here about my side upon some present business of the state to bear me to him? The Duke in council and this time of the night? Bring him away. Mine's not an idle cause. The Duke himself cannot but feel this wrong as for his own. <laughs> Scene three, a council chamber. The Duke and Senator sitting at a table with lights. Valiant Othello. We must straight employ you against the general enemy, Ottoman. I did not see you. Welcome, Signor Brabantio. We lacked your counsel and your help tonight. So did I yours. Good your grace, pardon me. Neither my place nor aught I heard of business has raised me from my bed, for my particular grief is of so floodgate and bearing nature... That it then gluts and swallows other sorrows. Why, what's the matter? My daughter. Oh, my daughter. Dead? Aye, to me. She is abused, stolen from me, and corrupted by spells and medicines. Bought of mountebanks. Here is the man, this moor, whom now it seems your special mandate for the state affairs has hither brought. Othello, what in your own part can you say to this? I do beseech you, send for the lady, and let her speak of me before her father. If you do find me foul in her report, let your sentence even fall upon my life. Fetch Desdemona hither. Iago, conduct them. You best know the place. And till she come, as truly as to heaven, I'll present how I did thrive in this fair lady's love and she in mine. You say it, Othello. Her father loved me, oft invited me, still questioned me the story of my life from year to year. I ran it through. I spoke of most disastrous chances, of moving accidents by flood and field, of being taken by the insolent foe and sold to slavery, and my redemption thence. This to hear would Desdemona seriously incline, and with a greedy ear devour up my discourse. When I did speak of some distressful stroke that my youth suffered, my story being done, she gave me for my pains a world of sighs. She swore in faith twas strange, twas passing strange. Twas pitiful, twas wondrous pitiful. She wished she had not heard it, yet she wished that heaven had made her such a man. She thanked me and bade me if I had a friend that loved her, I should but teach him how to tell my story and that would woo her. Upon this hint I spoke. She loved me for the dangers I had passed. And I loved her that she did pity them. This only is the witchcraft I have used. Here comes the lady. Let her witness it. Come hither, gentle mistress. Do you perceive in all this noble company where most you owe obedience? My noble father... I do perceive here a divided duty. To you I am bound for life and education. My life and education both do learn me how to respect you. But here's my husband. And so much duty as my mother showed to you, preferring you before her father. So much I challenge that I may profess due to the moor, my lord. Come hither, moor. I here do give you that with all my heart I would keep from you. For your sake, Jewel, I am glad at soul. I have no other child. I have done, my lord. Beseech you now to the affairs of state. The Turk, with most mighty preparation, makes for Cyprus. Othello, the fortitude of the place is best known to you. And though we have there Montano, a substitute of most... A loud sufficiency, yet opinion, a sovereign mistress of effects, throws a more safer voice on you. I do undertake these present wars against the Ottomites. At ten in the morning here, we'll meet again. Othello, leave some officer behind, and he shall our commission bring to you. Please, Your Grace, my ensign Iago, a man he is of honesty and trust. To his conveyance I assign my wife, 
With what else needful your good grace shall think to be sent after me. Let it be so. Good night to everyone. Adieu, brave Moor. Use Desdemona well. Look to her, Moor. Have a quick eye to see. She has deceived her father. May to thee. My life upon her faith. Come, Desdemona. I have but an hour of love, of worldly matters and direction to spend with thee. We must obey the time. What sayest thou, Rodrigo? What will I do? Why go to bed and sleep? I will incontinently drown myself. If you do, I shall never love thee after. Why, thou silly gentleman? What should I do? I confess it is my shame to be so fond of her, but it is not in my virtue to amend it. Virtue a fig. It is in ourselves that we are thus or thus. Our bodies are gardens to the which our wills are gardeners. Come, be a man. Drown thyself. Drown cats and blind puppies. Put money in thy purse. It cannot be that Desdemona should long continue her love unto the moor. Put money in thy purse, nor he to her. It was a violent commencement, and you shall see an answerable sequestration. Put but money in thy purse. These moors are changeable in their wills. She must change for youth. She will find the error of her choice. She must have change. She must. If you must damn yourself, do it a more delicate way than drowning. Make all the money you can. You shall enjoy her. Will you be fast to my hopes? You are sure of me. Go, make money. I have told thee often, and I tell thee again and again. I hate the moor. Adieu. I'll be with thee betimes. Thus do I ever make my fool my purse. I hate the moor. Let me see now. Cassio's a proper man. To get his place and to make up my will. A double knavery. How? How? After some time to abuse Othello's ear. That his lieutenant Cassio is too familiar with his wife. Cassio hath a person and a smooth disposed to be suspected. The moor is of a free and open nature that thinks men honest that but seem to be so, and will as tenderly be led by the nose as asses are. I have it. It is engendered. Hell and night must bring this monstrous birth to the world's light. <laughs> Autolite is bringing you Richard Woodmark, Kathy Lewis, and Elliot Lewis in part one of William Shakespeare's Othello. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Say, Harlow, how long has Autolite been making electrical systems? Ever since 1911, Senator, when Autolite developed the first two-unit, six-volt automotive electrical system ever used as original equipment. That was the granddaddy of today's complete and precision-made system, which includes generator, starting motor, distributor, and coil, spark plugs, battery, voltage regulator, and their thousands of component parts. All working together perfectly, eh, Harlow? Right, and you get the wonderful and economical operation you expect because it's an Autolite electrical system. That means that every unit and component part is related by Autolite engineering design and manufacturing skill to give you the smoothest performance money can buy. Sounds convincing, Wilcox. So, friends, be sure to specify Autolite original service parts for your Autolite-equipped car. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Richard Widmark, Kathy Lewis, and Elliot Lewis in Mr. Lewis's production of William Shakespeare's Othello, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Act Two, Scene One. A month later, a seaport in Cyprus, 
The wars are over. Othello's sail has been sighted. Enter Cassio, Iago, Rodrigo, and Desdemona. The Moor's lieutenant pays innocent compliment to Desdemona as Iago and the jealous Rodrigo stand apart. He takes her by the palm. I well said. Whisper. With as little a web as this will I ensnare as great a fly as Cassio. I smile upon her, do. I will catch you in your own courtesies. Good, well kissed. An excellent courtesy. Tis so indeed. Yet again your fingers to your lips. Would they were clister pipes for your sake. The moor, I know his trumpet. Tis truly so. Let's meet him and receive him. Oh, my fair warrior. My dear Othello. It gives me wonder great as my content to see you here before me. If it were now to die, t'were now to be most happy. For I fear my soul has her content so absolute that not another comfort like to this succeeds in unknown fate. The heavens forbid but that our loves and comfort should increase even as our days do grow. Amen to that, sweet powers. I cannot speak enough of this content. It stops me here. It is too much of joy. In this, in this, the greatest discords be that e'er our heart shall make. I prithee, good Iago, go to the bay and disembark my coffers. Come, Cassio. Come, Desdemona. Once more. Well met at Cyprus. I will tell you this, good Roderigo. Desdemona is directly in love with Cassio. With him? Why, it is not possible. Mark me with what violence she first loved the Moor, but for bragging and telling her fantastical lies. And will she love him still for prating? Let not thy discreet heart think so. Her eye must be fed. And what delight shall she have to look on the devil... Her delicate tenderness will find itself abused and compel her to some second choice. Now, sir, this granted, who stands so eminently in the degree of this fortune as Cassio does? I cannot believe that in her. She's full of the most blessed conditions. Blessed, fig's end. Didst not see her paddle with the palm of Cassio's hand? Didst not mark that? Yes, but that was but courtesy. Letchery by this hand. An index, an obscure prologue to the history of lust and foul thoughts. They met so near with their lips that their breaths embraced together. But, sir, watch you tonight. Cassio knows you not. I'll not be far from you. Do you find some occasion to anger Cassio? Well... Provoke him that he may strike you. For even out of that will I cause these of Cyprus to mutiny, whose qualification shall come into no true trust again but by the displanting of Cassio. So shall you have a shorter journey to your desires. I will do this if I can bring it to any opportunity. I warrant thee. Meet me by and by at the citadel. I must fetch his necessaries ashore. Farewell. Adieu. I'll have our Michael Cassio on the hip. Abuse him to the moor in the rank garb. Make the moor thank me, love me, and reward me for making him egregiously an ass and practicing upon his peace and quiet, even to madness. Tis here but yet confused. Knavery's plain face is never seen till used. Scene, a hall in the castle. The time, early night. Enter Iago and Cassio. We must to the watch, Iago. Not this hour, Lieutenant. It is not yet ten o'clock. Our general cast us thus early for the love of his Desdemona, who let us not therefore blame. She is a most exquisite lady. Indeed, she is a most fresh and delicate creature. What an eye she has. Methinks it sounds a parley of provocation. An inviting eye, and yet, methinks, right modest. And when she speaks, is it not an alarm to love? It is indeed perfection. Well, happiness to them. Come, Lieutenant, I have a stoop of wine. And here without are a brace of cypress gallants that would fain have a measure to the health of a fellow. Not tonight, good Iago. I have very poor and unhappy brains for drinking. But one cup I'll drink for you. I have drunk but one cup tonight. 
I am unfortunate in the infirmity and dare not task my weakness with any more. What, man? Tis a night of revels. The gallants desire it. Where are they? Here at the door. I pray you, call them in. I'll do it, but it dislikes... Gentlemen, I am drunk. This is my right hand and this is my left hand. I am not drunk now. I can stand well enough and speak well enough. Very well, then. You must not think that I am drunk. To the master's platform. Come, let's set the watch. Good Montano. You see this fellow that has gone before. He is a soldier fit to stand by Caesar. Yet I fear the trust Othello put him in on some odd time of his infirmity will shake this island. Oh, but is he often thus? Tis evermore the prologue to his sleep. It were well the general were put in mind of it. Help, help! But hark, what noise? Help, you rogue, you rascal! What's the matter, Lieutenant? I'll beat the knave into a wicker bottle. Beat me! Do you break wrong? Good Lieutenant, pray, sir, hold your hand. Let me go, sir. I'll knock you all a mazard. Come, come, you're drunk. Drunk? Rodrigo, away. Go out and cry a mutiny. Nay, good Lieutenant, sir. Montano. Help, masters. Who's that that rings the bell? The town will rise. What is the matter here? Hold for your line. Lieutenant, sir. Montano. Gentlemen, have you forgot all sense of place and duty? Hold. The general speaks to you. Silence that dreadful bell. It strikes the aisle from her propriety. What's the matter, masters? Honest Iago, that looks dead with grieving. Speak, who began this? I do not know. I cannot speak any beginning to this peevish odds. How came it, Michael, you were thus forgot? I pray you, pardon me, I cannot speak. Worthy Montano, what's the matter that you unlace your reputation thus and spend your rich opinion for the name of a night brawler? Give me answer to it. Or the Othello, I am hurt to danger. Your officer, Iago, can inform you. Now, by heaven, if I stir or do but lift this arm, the best of you shall sink in my rebuke. Iago, who began? If you deliver more or less than truth, you are no soldier. Touch me not so near. I had rather have this tongue cut from my mouth than it should do offense to Michael Cassio. Yet I persuade myself to speak the truth. Shall nothing wrong him? Thus it is, General. Montano and myself being in speech, there comes a fellow crying out for help, and Cassio following him with determined sword to execute upon him. Sir, Montano steps into Cassio and entreats his pause. Myself the crying fellow did pursue. He swift of foot outran my purpose. When I came back, for this was brief, I found them close together at blow and thrust, even as again they were when you yourself did part them. Though Cassio did some little wrong to him, yet surely he received from him that fled some strange indignity which patience could not pass. I know, Iago, your honesty and love does mince this matter, making it light to Cassio. Cassio, I love thee, but never more be officer of mine. Montano, for your hurts, myself will be your surgeon. Lead him off. Iago, look with care about the town and silence those whom this vile brawl distracted. Good night. Tell me, Cassio, what was he that you followed with your sword? What had he done to you? I remember a mass of things, but nothing distinctly. Quarrel, but nothing wherefore. But you are now well enough. How came you thus recovered? It has pleased the devil. Wrath. One unperfectness shows me another to make me frankly despise myself. Come, you are too severe immorally. I will ask him for my place again. He shall tell me I am a drunkard. Come, 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 come. You or any man living may be drunk at some time. I'll tell you what you shall do. Our general's wife is now the general. Confess yourself freely to her. Importune her help to put you in your place again. She is of so free, so kind, so apt, so blessed a disposition 
she holds it a vice in her goodness not to do more than she is requested. This broken joint between you and her husband. Entreat her to splinter. You advise me well. I protest. In the sincerity of love and honest kindness. In the morning will I beseech the virtuous Desdemona to undertake for me. I'm desperate of my fortunes if they check me here. You are in the right. Good night, Lieutenant. I must to the watch. Good night. Honest Iago. And what is he, then, that says I play the villain? When this advice is free, I give and honest, probable to thinking, and indeed the course to win the moor again. For while this honest fool plies Desdemona to repair his fortunes, and she for him pleads strongly to the moor, I'll pour this pestilence into his ear, that she repels him for her lust. And by how much she strives to do him good, she shall undo her credit with the moor. So will I turn her virtue into pitch, and out of her own goodness make the net that shall enmesh them all. <laughs> Suspense. Part one of Othello by William Shakespeare. Tonight stars Richard Widmark, Kathy Lewis, and Elliot Lewis. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for Autolite, world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. Autolite is proud to serve the greatest names in the industry. They are members of the Autolite family, as well as are the 98,000 Autolite distributors and dealers in the United States and thousands more in Canada and throughout the world. Our family also includes the nearly 30,000 men and women in 28 great Autolite plants from coast to coast and Autolite plants in many foreign countries, as well as the 18,000 people who have invested a portion of their savings in Autolite. Every Autolite product is backed by constant research and precision built to the highest standards of quality and performance. So remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. Next week, we conclude this first radio adaptation of William Shakespeare's tragic history of love and treachery and death, Othello. Again next week, our stars will be Richard Widmark, Kathy Lewis, and Elliot Lewis. And again next week, we hope to keep you in suspense. The abridged Othello was adapted for suspense by Anthony Ellis and Elliot Lewis. The program was transcribed and directed by Mr. Lewis, with music arranged by Lucian Morrowick from themes by Giuseppe Verdi. The orchestra was conducted by Lud Gluskin. Featured in tonight's cast were Joseph Kearns as Cassio, William Conrad as Montano, Whitfield Connor as Roderigo, Herb Butterfield as Brabacho, William Johnstone as the Duke, Byron Kane, and Larry Thorpe. Richard Widmark may soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox picture, Pick Up on South Street. And remember, next week we conclude Othello. You can buy Autolite electrical parts, Autolite stay-full batteries, and Autolite resistor or standard type spark plugs at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. Planned saving is best saving. Your bank will be happy to arrange for your regular purchase of United States savings bonds. The service is free. Why not sign up tomorrow for planned savings through savings bonds? This is the CBS Radio Network.